We could have done this video last week. We could have done it two weeks ago, maybe even three weeks ago. But I put it here because it gives us a transition from simplicial complexes back into graphs, uh, especially because we were talking about linear embeddings of simplicial complexes a little bit last time, and we want to get back to graphs. And it's one of the coolest, most, I think, fun puzzle problems you can pose sort of immediately once you start drawing planar graphs. And the proof is not trivial, but it's also not too difficult. So we have enough tools to do it. The proof, or I should say the theorem that we're going to prove is Fari's theorem. It also has a bunch of other names. And the theorem says essentially the following that you can draw planar graphs with just straight lines, just straight edges. You don't need to draw curvy lines. We've probably seen a bunch of examples. Let's see. I think my favorite one is always to look at K4. First time you draw K4 and you draw four vertices in a square, you need to draw at least one of the edges so it's not straight, but you can rearrange it to be a triangle with a vertex in the middle and suddenly you have straight edges and you could ask, and I think most people do naturally wonder this when they first start drawing planar graphs is, can I do it with all straight lines? And the answer that we're gonna see today is yes, you can do it. You can draw a planar graph, you can embed it with all straight lines, or in other words, if G is planar, then there exists a linear embedding. Into the plane. All right. So let's jump in. How do you prove this? Um, hmm. I'm going to first make the following claim. That's going to suffice for us to prove it for maximal planar graphs. So the reason I claim this is that if it wasn't maximal, you could just add more edges and do the embedding and then remove those edges and it would still be a linear embedding. So if it's not a maximal planar graph, again, you could just keep adding more edges and assume it is. So we're going to assume that we're we're trying to find a linear embedding of a maximal planar graph. And we know some things about maximal planar graphs, right? We know that they're three connected. We know that their faces are all triangles. And we're going to use these facts. We know another cool fact, too, which is that every planar graph has a vertex of degree at most five. And we got this, remember, from using Euler's formula and proving that no planar graph can have more than 3n minus 6 edges, and so the average degree of, of the vertices had to be strictly less than 6. And so at least one vertex had degree at most 5. And we're going to use that special vertex and induction to prove this theorem. So let's go through the steps. I'm going to give a high-level description of the steps. I'm going to walk through the, the key insight in the middle, and then I'm going to draw pictures to see how these steps work in practice. So the key thing is, because it's three connected triangulation uh, and it's planar, there's some vertex that has degree at most five. And the steps we're going to follow are as follows. We're going to remove V from the graph. Now, if you take a graph, you, you pull out a vertex. If it was planar before, it's going to still be planar. So I have a new planar graph with fewer vertices. I'm going to add edges to make it maximal again. This is like re-triangulating the hole that's left when you remove a vertex. And then we're going to embed it. We're going to find a linear embedding of this other graph. And we'll do that by induction on the number of vertices. So even though we added edges here, we have one fewer vertices, and so by induction, we're going to be able to find a linear embedding of this graph with fewer vertices. Now, once we have that embedding, we're going to remove the extra edges. 
and we're going to embed V in the five gon, or it could be smaller, I guess, depending on what the degree was. I'm going to take the hardest case here, the five gon formed by its neighbors. And so we'll see this in pictures in a second, but the key step is going to be to find a way to embed V so that it can be connected to its neighbors with all straight lines. And to do that, we're going to rely on this geometric fact, which I'm not going to prove here, but it's um, maybe a fun exercise, is to show that pentagons are star-shaped. Star-shaped is a technical term. It means that there's a, there's a point inside the shape such that every point can be connected by a straight line that contain, that's contained entirely within the shape. So the quintessential example might be an actual star like this. And the definition of star-shaped is that there's at least one point such that every other point, if I draw a straight line, the entire line segment is contained in the shape. Another way to think of it is to imagine that this is a room and that if I stood at this one vertex and, and I look around, I can see every point in the room, that nothing can obstruct my vision from this one point. And clearly that's going to be the property we want because if it's star-shaped, that means there's a place where we can put the vertex V. Now, if you have a pentagon, there's only five different ways at most five different ways to triangulate it. In fact, if I drew it as a graph, every triangulation of a pentagon will be isomorphic to this graph. So there's always going to be one vertex, one special vertex that has straight line segments to the other two. And so when I take a whatever embedding of a pentagon, even if it's not convex, I've always got one vertex which is connected to all four of the other vertices when I triangulate it. So these are really the only two interesting cases. And in both cases, there's some vertex that's connected to both. So, so there's at least a point, if I allow a vertex to be placed on top of this point, then uh, it clearly has a straight line segment to each of the vertices and it just takes a tiny bit of work to show that you could move the point just a little bit in the neighborhood of that vertex in, in so say this yellow region here and connect it up by straight line segments to all the vertices without leaving the shape. That's going to be key because that's going to be where we stick V when we put it back in and the star-shaped property is going to guarantee that it really is an embedding, that the edges we add in don't cross any of the existing edges. So let's do it in pictures. So we started with a vertex V here, which had degree less than or equal to 5. We removed it. We re-triangulate. And we Retriangulate, this is of course just done on the graph, which means we're just adding edges until all the faces are triangles. And so we can actually choose, we haven't embedded it yet. We don't, I've drawn it, but I don't necessarily have an embedding. So I, I can choose a vertex that has uh, edges connected to the other two across the, this five gone, which gets left behind when I remove V. And so I, I kind of know which vertex is going to be near where I stick V. And now I can embed it. And this is, again, going to be by induction. I know that if a graph has, say, fewer than four vertices, or fewer than, well, four, certainly if it only has three vertices, it's planar. Um, actually, if it has fewer than five vertices, it's planar. And so the, that'll handle the base case. 
and now I have a graph with one fewer vertices I'm going to use induction to get an embedding. And so it's going to look like something. I don't know what it will look like, but I know a couple things. One is that I know that these triangles will be faces because I know that they are triangles of some embedding of this subgraph. In particular, they're going to be the non-separating induced cycles. Every triangle is an induced subgraph. And they're going to be non-separating because this whole face was non-separating in G minus V. So I have this embedding. I know I'm going to have those three triangles right here. And so when I remove those edges, it's going to join those three triangles together into some polygon with at most five sides. So I remove those edges. And then we're going to add V to this polygon. Now, the question I usually get asked when I present this proof is, do we really need to add those extra edges? I think it helps to guarantee that when we remove them again, or that when we embed this, that this, this cycle here actually is going to be a face in the embedding. You see, when we remove this one vertex, it's no longer three connected. It's two connected, but not necessarily three connected. So it's hard to reason about what faces we will see in the embedding. Remember, we needed three connectivity to guarantee that the faces of the embedding are uniquely determined by the graph. And so just retriangulating makes it maximal, makes it three connected, makes it a guarantee that we know exactly what faces we'll see. So then when we get those three triangles, we know if the two triangles share an edge, we remove those edges, we get a bigger face. And again, remove an edge, you get a bigger face. And this polygon that you get, which is the union of those three triangles, is a polygon with at most five sides. It's star-shaped. So there's a place to put V, which can be connected by straight edges to the vertices of that polygon. And of course, those vertices are exactly the vertices that are the neighbors of V in our original graph. And so we've constructed, using induction, an embedding of the graph.